So that's kind of a general overview of ESAs. They're basically pets that bring you comfort if you have a condition like anxiety, depression, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not service animals. They're not specifically trained. Service animals are trained for a very long time. They have specific tasks and they are able to be out in public and have public access because of how well behaved they are. Um, so ESAs are kind of like a an in-between, right. like a pet and a service dog. So with an ESA, uh, I like one thing that you said, you're like, it's to help them like in their own home. So that doesn't, it was, an ESA doesn't have any more public right. access than you a regular You cannot dog. bring an ESA into a restaurant. I will say it <laughs> That's again. That's a big thing I wanted to touch on. <laughs> I will say it again. You cannot bring an ESA into a restaurant. You cannot bring an ESA into Walmart. You cannot bring an Anywhere ESA else into a doctor's dog office. Is not allowed. Right? You cannot. Yeah, absolutely. You, <laughs> you can bring an ESA into PetSmart. Go for it. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> All uh, long. But you cannot bring them and claim that you have access rights. When you go online, and this really, really gets me mad, are these sites that A, you can get a fake doctor's letter. Because that's a big thing I didn't mention that. With ESAs, you have to have a doctor's note mm -hmm. in order to be able to move into an apartment that does not allow dogs or to have your dog on an airplane. You have to have a doctor's note. And so now there are, the, there are these sites that will give you a, a fake doctor's note. And then you can order badges and vests and all that kind of stuff. You don't need that because you can't use those badges to get into public spaces that don't allow dogs that's they're fake so don't even waste your money on it mm -hmm. you don't have to register your ESA you only have to communicate with your landlord communicate with the airlines communicate with public transportation whatever and your doctor and your doctor, and your doctor. that's legit come on <laughs> yeah get your real doctor to do it if you don't have a condition then you, you don't, don't need, need an ESA um and I think what I think what bothers me a lot about that and you made a post one day you, it was a long time ago, I think before I even like reached out to you, um, about how someone who will have an ESA, right, so a dog that doesn't require any formal training, so they're probably acting out, they bring their ESA into a restaurant, and then the next person who comes up who has an actual service dog, the restaurant owner is fed up because the last dog in his restaurant caused a problem. Right. So now the person who has the service dog is paying the consequence because they're probably getting bothered and we can yeah. dive into the legal aspect of that later yeah but it just hurts the people who need their service dogs right and so you you know like you said it gives people a bad business owners a bad taste in their mouth mm -hmm. for when a real service dog comes in and then now you're causing them to have a public access issue and when you go in and you flash a flash a badge or bring out certificates or have all this paperwork that you're giving them because your dog is certified no such thing spoiler alert <laughs> um when you flash all that to business owners they expect that from the next person because business owners are sense. not by nature educated on the laws mm -hmm. regarding emotional support animals and service dogs they just know that the last person showed me all these forms and they looked pretty right real. and all they really know is the health code states no pets can be in the restaurant because it is unsanitary or against health code, whatever. It's mm -hmm. against the health code. And so they are already on guard to just refuse animals. Mm -hmm. And then when you've got an unruly animal that came in with a badge, it, it makes it so much harder for the rest of us who are actually trying to get in with our well-trained service dogs who people literally do not notice until we get up off, out of the table. Right. It's the best thing as a service dog handler. Like to, no, it's the best thing as a service dog handler to be able to get up after you're done eating and start walking out of the restaurant and hear the tables next to you go, oh my God, I didn't even know there was a dog in here. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like, if you didn't point out Remy, like, if you didn't yeah, say, like, she's, oh, she's right here. No, I wouldn't have known until yeah. we pulled her out to do something. Exactly. She's chill. Yeah, because she's totally just laying and chilling asleep. And, you know, we were in Florida recently at a service dog training school. Shout out to Victoria Warfel. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um... And we were at a hibachi restaurant and you know you kind of sit communally at a table right. and i had someone directly next to me i mean like right here a man who i'd never met a day in my life he was already sitting there when we walked in we walked in remy sat under the table about 20 minutes through his wife asks me what kind of dog do you have down there and he goes 
there's a dog down there? <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. This guy was two right, and a half feet away from me, and he was there when we walked in. He right. wasn't paying attention, so he didn't see her, but, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. And so that's the kind of dog that you want mm -hmm. as a service dog, but you don't often get it because it's ESAs that aren't actually service right. dogs. So that's how we feel about emotional square animals.